Okay. I made it. I'm on the call. Um, in reviewing the list of characters, I see we have a quorum. Um, I believe that Andrea Falcons will not be joining us today. Is there a motion to excuse her from this meeting? So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. Um, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. second. Um, any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. We'll go on to our guest, Mike Barber. Okay. Thank you all. Um, first off, um, you know, I, I'll lead off and I, I talked to John yesterday about and uh, we announced it to the membership um, today. I sent out a, a little note about it, but we discussed it at the last board meeting and we had met with our strategic planning committee and so forth. And we we have I mean, there are various things about the Marshwood development project that um, obviously are a real benefit to the club. And first off, I, I want to say that I appreciate the fact that I think we figured out a path forward with you all on how we could accomplish it. I think, you know, we we both sort of vetted out what what the right path for annexation is and all those sorts of things. So I think we've accomplished some things, but in in presenting this several times and we came back with one one more site plan that um, to to our board and in talking with some of the other members of the strategic planning committee, we're we're still not completely happy with how it overshadows a golf course. I mean, it 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 it's a visual image that some members are having a hard time with and. I think the fact that that's been one a wooded lot for the last hurricane, a more open piece of property and so forth. Um, you know, we kept trying to move it back. And as we moved it back, you know, we've we've cut out houses. We've tried to make it less dense. But, you know, it seems like however we we try to to work that in on that parcel, it's not it's not a perfect parcel for um, the density that we we were proposing. So we've decided to put that project on pause, not turn it completely off, but um, but we've Im informed the contours uh, that we want to take another look at it. We want to make sure that if we decide to move forward with development of that project, that we come up with a plan that makes sense for, you know, our tennis members, um, the golf members, the golf community, the neighborhood that works with what you all need, uh, works with what we would want and so forth, and try, try and see if we can figure out um, maybe a better path forward on that. That being said, we're also going to consider maybe other options. You know, it, it it's a great piece of property. There are a lot of things that we could do with it that would be advantageous or beneficial to club members as maybe a different sort of amenity over there. So so we're going to we're going to get down with a, a land planner and sit down with a blank sheet of paper and kind of relook at the whole thing. It, it's extremely enticing to think we could raise some funds, but quite frankly, you know, we <laughs> as you all do, you can spend funds really quickly like that and they're gone and Maybe you missed an opportunity to really develop a, a extra piece of property in a better fashion that serves the long term, you know, membership benefits and and serves the club in a much better fashion. So that that's my my first announcement. And and so again, Sherry, thank you, John, thank you. Um, you know, you and I had a lot of you know meetings back in the in the early part of the year and so forth and and. Um, you know, I appreciate the time that you spent with me and so forth. And, you know, we we are. Um, we'll figure out what we're going to do with it and we'll be back to you guys, um, I'm sure, with with uh, letting you know at least what our, our future plans are on that. So. 
So that's that's the big announcement. Um, the other thing is I'm continually pleased with what's going on in the real estate market. I don't know who I keep asking Raul, who are all these people that are selling their homes and leaving? Because we keep getting new members coming in like crazy on the, on the backside. And uh, our membership numbers were up again in uh, in April. I think we were plus 20. Yeah, plus 29, which it brings us to plus 73 for the year. We're actually over our target for the end of the year for golf memberships. We're at 1455. We were hoping to get to 1450. So I took the opportunity to tell Stephen that we've just raised the budget to 1500. So why why stop here? We should keep pushing this trend as, as far as it goes. You know, our athletic memberships continue to grow. Um, you know, we're we're seeing not as many resignations as we typically would. So again, I keep wondering where are these people going? I know there are some anecdotal reports of people that are, you know, selling their homes and then I don't know what they're renting on the island, but they're renting something and staying here. But um, we're going to keep writing these membership trends as long as long as we can. So that's been good. Our April results were great. Terrific again. Um, you know, we beat um, beat the budget and um, and um, beat budget both both for the month of April and year to date on our transfer to capital. We've reforecasted and increased our estimate up to 2.1 million. So we raised that forecast up 100,000. Um, other highlights, we um, we once again in f and somehow did almost $1.3 million in f and revenue, which is the second month in a row. And that's another record for the club. All the outlets seem to be full and and it's hard to get reservations. Um, so that that continues a good trend. We approved a, an appropriation request for a significant one for 397K of golf course maintenance equipment. As you know, we're in, all in the grass cutting business and we keep wearing out tractors and other, other implements and so continue to spend money there. We were able to refinance our loan on the last capital plan and uh, we got a little bit lower rate down to three and a quarter percent. I think that'll save us about 75 K over the balance of that loan. Let's see, we're on, on target with all of our KPIs. Um, we did a new um, wave two member survey. Generally speaking, those, those numbers and, and um, trends look good. Uh, we've started to make some gains in F&B staffing, which is is critical because we know we've been short staffed and, and stretching our our folks quite a bit in F&B, but we begin to see some um, some increases there and new people. And I think that bodes well, hopefully within the next 20 to 30 days, if we continue to see those strong trends, we ought to be able to open up the clubs even more, you know, maybe think about expanded hours definitely add maybe a few more tables back and so forth. And as as we've all unmasked and feel more comfortable operating in our everyday lives. Um, on the golf side, you know, a couple of the big things, again, the Magnolia project, I'm sure anybody that lives close to, to the golf course there can see that that continues to unfold. Chris keeps telling me that that'll be done on time. Um, you know, with the lack of rain, we're certainly picking up time in the construction progress, but that continues to move along well. We've uh, got final engineering and architectural drawings on the Golf Performance Center. Obviously not happy with the increase of costs that we're starting to see in materials and things like that. So we've got to blend that into the project and figure out that from a budgetary standpoint. But, you know, our goal is still to get that built uh, or at least get it get shovels in the ground at some point this year and get that going. Um, let me see if I have anything else quickly for you all. Nope, that's about it. So, um, you know, things are, are continuing to move well and, and um, membership numbers are up. You know, we're very pleased with that. And um, I think we're all pleased with what's going on in the real estate market with home prices and so forth. So, and and I thank you all for the wonderful paving 
of, of Delegal and now Landings Way South. So uh, I'm getting a lot more traffic by my house over here along Paragon Road right now, but you know, it's all for the good. So thank you. That's all I have. Anybody Let's have any questions? questions? Anybody have any questions for Mike? Great. Thanks, Mike. I'm glad to hear the ongoing good news. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Bob Egan. Yes, John. I'm here. Uh, good news for Channel Emergency Services. We had no structure fires, no major activity. You can see we only had 12 call outs of fire, which is uh, pretty low. So overall, uh, you know, we're continuing on the same trend we've been on uh, with the first responder calls, 86. And uh, overall, I would say uh, much, nothing more we can say about uh, what's going on with Chatham Emergency Services, uh, only that I will keep you up to date again on our issue, which is collections. Uh, the county continues to uh, kick that baby down the street. Uh, we have not... Uh, gotten any response from them other than uh, they are sure they are not going to have their own fire department, <laughs> which I guess is a good thing for all of us. Uh, but overall, we're still waiting and uh, hopefully we will hear shortly. So that is all I really have, John. Thanks. Anybody have any questions for Bob? Thanks again. Um, General Manager Staff Reports, Pending Project, Sherry. You're muted. Thank you, sorry about that, folks. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, hopefully today will be the last completely remote monthly meeting of the board. Um, during our, our remote experiences through this past year and some, we've noticed that some of our uh, working committee members, people who are still gainfully employed, as well as our ARC uh, participants, our applicants, the architects and the builders, um, have uh, really appreciated the opportunity to have some more flexibility into their respective schedules that our Microsoft Teams remote platform provides. The ARC, for example, um, in, in that case, applicants who really want to be present to address the, the committee were crammed into our lobby. Um, and of course, when you think about the fact that we've been averaging 20 you know, to 24 applications, that's a lot of people crammed into our, our actual physical lobby. Um, so what we've what we've now seen is that um, those kinds of folks can actually be in their offices working, uh, not losing productive time, and instead of physically waiting for lengthy periods. Um, and so we think that we should continue to to leverage that. And as the board is well aware, we're going to be making improvements to the AV system in our conference room in early June. Um, that will enhance the hybrid experience so that we can have meetings in that room, uh, but we can have others calling in. Um, whether you're a working person who is attending a committee meeting or a board meeting and you want to participate, this will enhance what we had prior to COVID. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. That should, we've been discussing um, with the uh, the firm and I believe that all the equipment's in and they're just scheduling the date, which is like June 8th or 9th, I, I think. So um, anyway, so we will, both the committee meetings and the board meetings will be um, in person um, beginning in June. So the other thing is we're pushing into hurricane season, of course, already, uh, which begins June 1. I wanna remind everybody especially with all of the, the new owners coming in, that TLA does host an annual uh, Hurricane Town Hall meeting. It's gonna be in Palmetto, Palmetto Club again, as always. And um, that, uh, that date is June 16th. 
and Seema will make a presentation. I want to encourage all of the new new owners who've not been through that before to come on out and um, hope we have a heavy turnout. Um, and that, you know, that is probably the one thing that if you're new to the island or new to the area that you want to be paying attention to. Hopefully we won't have to use it for any reason, um, but it's good to have under your belt. Uh, the other thing I want to mention was we had an amazing response to a request for volunteers to serve, serve on the Landings Harbor project team. When we closed the application submissions at the end of this past week, we had 50 people who had submitted applications to be considered. So, so we've got quite a, the board has quite a vetting process to, uh, to get through. And the, of course, our goal right now is to um, <clears throat> complete that review, have you completed and make those appointments at the June meeting so we can get this project rolling along. <clears throat> and we have just a ton of people with really good experience. So not saying that's going to be going to be easy, but um, the other thing, you know, Mike mentioned it, we uh, really try to push up all of our uh, big capital projects. So, you know, we've got um, Sean and his team have really been hopping uh, right now, uh, wrapping up, hopefully wrapping up the street resurfacing program. It's moving along really well. Delago is done. Uh, Delago Road is done. It's completed and the crews are now, of course, on Landings Way uh, south on the south side. And um, we want to wrap that up before the holiday weekend and then make sure that everything is open for the holiday weekend and then resume on the north side um, at Tuesday thereafter. But Sean, why don't you give the up to the minute status on that? Yeah, so I just put a couple pictures together on PowerPoint. Uh, again, our 2021 road project, uh, Delegal Road was the first uh, road that we addressed. Uh, we're currently working on Landings Way South from Huntingwood, uh, retreat down to Pal the Palmetto Club entrance. Um, we'll be moving then from there to Landings Way North and then eventually to Mercer. Um, Delegal turned out very nice. Uh, if you've had a chance to ride through it, I do want to thank all the residents that um, were very patient with us through this process. One thing we are trying to do with our, our roads projects is to make sure that we are putting a, the correct amount of focus into the installation and making sure it's right. Um, what part of that is allowing the, the concrete really to cure and cool um, but so that we don't have any kind of rutting or, or pushing of the, that hot asp asphalt. So that does require a little bit of time uh, during that process. So Delegal, everything is done. Uh, contractor and uh, engineer will be doing a walkthrough punch list items uh, in this upcoming week. Uh, but for the most part, it's uh, been a very good uh, overall ride quality. Everything's been been uh, really well received. We did have our first boo-boo, if you will. Um, there was one scratch on the road, of course, about three days after we finished paving, uh, where it uh, looked like a trailer hitch might have dragged on it. So as soon as you have everything looking just perfect, it's uh, there's always one thing that, that kind of occurs. So we're working through to see if we can get that uh, adjusted and, and repaired with uh, some infrared uh, heat. We're currently working right now on Laney's Way South. Um, if you're able to see the milling process, it's, it's a much different process than we've done in the past. Mm -hmm. um, you can see in the picture uh, all the way to your far left is the typical milling machine we use. It cuts a four foot um, path down the roadway. We were able to get a second mill, uh, which is the mill in the, in the middle, which cuts a seven foot um, path down through the middle. This was actually previously out at the intersection of 16 and 95. If you've been driving out that way and, and seeing all the construction, but we were able to get this company to come in. Um, this is, I will say this is the largest mill that we can fit into the community because we had about an inch of clearance on each side of the gate arm coming in through the main gate uh, <laughs> without having to get very creative of how we get this in. Um, and it, it did speed up the process. And Monday, uh, we were able to, it was two passes with each mill, the smaller mill doing uh, closest to the curb and the larger mill doing the, the two center lanes. Um, so the entire roadway was completely milled uh, really in about between eight o'clock and 2.30. Uh, today, we've been working on the cleanup process uh, if you remember, Lanning's Way South has a lot of asphalt that's actually over the, the uh, gutter section of the curb uh, on the center island side. 
And so we have to hand remove all that material and then start the cleanup process uh, to get it ready for tacking, which it was actually tacked uh, this afternoon, this about a half an hour ago uh, with a trackless tack. Uh, Bennett actually drove all the way up to North Carolina to find a, a mill that was producing the, the tackless track. But what that does is it actually hardens and allows for traffic to be able to go back onto the roadway without, if you've ever seen some of the, the paving projects where they don't use a tackless track and you can see the black lines that come off of the project over and over again, um, this product actually will harden up and allow to be uh, driven over. And then when you put the hot asphalt on, it'll actually liquefy again and, and cause that adhesion between the uh, roadway. So here's just the, the kind of the cleanup process. Uh, where we are going from here is tomorrow we will start our paving process. If you're familiar with Laning's Way South, we have a, um, on parts of Laning's Way South, we have a, what I would uh, call a, a kind of a seal coat line that goes down between the two lanes. In order to prevent that from happening again, <clears throat> uh, we are actually bringing in uh, multiple pavers. So we're gonna have two pavers on site. Um, we'll be paving both lanes simultaneously uh, so that we will have a hot seam. So you'll have a essentially a seamless process once, once the rollers come through. But one of the challenges with doing running two pavers is you have to feed two pavers. So instead of nine to 10 dump trucks that we typically would have on site, we're gonna have 18 trucks running uh, from the mill back and forth. And then we've also brought in additional rollers uh, to roll the asphalt behind. Um, and then it actually brought in a third paver to have on his backup in case we do have a mechanical breakdown with one of the two. So we'll have a total of three pavers on site, 18 dump trucks rolling in, uh, in and out of the community with asphalt and three rollers that'll be uh, working to, to secure that process. Really Wednesday afternoon, once the, the pavement has, has cooled um, to about 180 degrees or cooler, uh, we'll start the process of opening up the, the roadway. Thursday, we'll have some temporary closures to allow for the pavement striping to occur. Uh, we'll only be paving the, um, the community or the car path trail down the side. The crossovers and everything will be done once the other lane of the northbound of Laney's Way South is completed so that we have a consistent paint all the way across. And uh, as Sherry had mentioned, we'll be fully open for the holiday weekend uh, and we will not begin work on the uh, northbound lane until the following Tuesday after the holiday weekend. So that's where we are. Everything's going very well. I'll say Bennett's been a, a very good partner in this, uh, especially with the planning and, and making sure that they're putting above and beyond the resources needed to, to get this done in a quick and efficient manner and, and also improve quality from what we had before. Correct. Okay. And Sean and Bill should be um, commended for the changes that they've made to the program, especially with such a big project. It's getting done faster. It's going to be a higher quality because of the changes that they've made um, and people can use it faster. It does create more inconvenience. Where we're not allowing people to be driving through the same area that we're working in, but the end result is a much better project overall so sean uh and pass my compliments to bill as well please absolutely i will yeah yeah so thank you sean um does anybody have any other questions before we move on to the financial report we have an answer okay so that's jessica thanks sherry the finance Financial information is going to be as of the end of April, so April 30th of 2021. Our total operating revenue is 101,000 more than it was more than budget and more than it was at the end of April of 2020. Total operating expenses 137,000 less than budget and more than they were at the end of April of 2020. Our cash balance is adequate and stable. Our members' equity balance has increased 1.1 million since December of 2020. Our money market interest rate with Ameris Bank remains at 0.175%. The 2021 assessment statements were mailed out on February 2nd, and we've spent 447,000 to date on capital expenditures out of a $3.6 million budget. This slide shows our cash and investments for the last three years at the end of April. The dark blue bar represents our cash <laughs> and the light blue represents our investments. This slide shows our capital reserves fund cash balances at the end of April and our, and our accounts with Ameris Bank. 
This slide shows the cash balances that we have with Ameris for our operating accounts, as well as the petty cash that we have on hand at the end of April. This slide shows the CD that we have uh, invested with the Claxton Bank. It's a six month CD that we opened in January, will mature in July, and we will earn 0.65% interest at maturity. This slide shows the total operating revenue at the end of April. The dark blue represents the budget. The light blue represents the actuals. Our total operating revenue at the end of April was more than budget and more than where we were at the end of, end of April of 2020. Vehicle registration, architectural fee revenue, our member services, which is mainly due to shipping revenues performing better than budget. That's offsetting our other revenue, mainly due to the employee retention tra tax credit and the delays with the processing with the IRS. Our revenue for 2021 compared to 2020 is, is performing better, mainly due to vehicle registration, our architectural fee revenue, and also chipping revenue. This slide shows the total operating expenses at the end of April. The dark blue represents budget. The light blue represents actuals. Our total operating expenses at the end of April is less than budget, more than where we were at the end of April of 2020. Staffing expenses, professional fees, and dredging expenses are performing better than budget. This is offsetting our other expense, which is performing less than budget, mainly due to our bad debt expense. That is related to the 2021 assessment accounts that are outstanding at the end of April. Bad debt will continue to be reduced throughout the year as the list of outstanding assessments are made and is reduced. Our operating expenses compared to last year is mainly due to the timing of when the dredging payments were made in 2021 compared to 2020. Our facilities expenses increased along with the revenue that we mentioned just a few minutes ago. And we also had a sale of a sweet street sweeper in 2020 that was recorded as a gain. This slide shows our members equity at the end of April. We currently showed of 12.206 fund balance at, on April 30th. Our accounts receivable aging at the end of April, we had 18 non-assessment accounts with past due balances of 90 plus days. 11 of those were in TLA collection. The 2021 assessment statements were mailed on February 2nd. We currently have 120 members that are enrolled in the monthly payment option, which is new for 2021. And we have 304 members that are enrolled in the quarterly payment option compared to 582 in 2020. On April 6th, on April 6th, we had 246 accounts that received letters, which means that they had balances remaining for the current year assessment statement compared to 164 in 2020. On May the 3rd, privileges were suspended for those that had an outstanding balance for their current year assessments, which had gone down to 83 from the 246 that received letters, and currently we are at 30 outstanding accounts as of today. We're at 99% collection um, rate compared to last year at 98%. We also received two payments during April, one that was in TLA collection and one that was an account that was with our collection attorney for prior, prior, prior year past due balances. This last, this last slide is going to show the uh, payment activity that we have seen with our lockbox uh, 2021. We're at 2,725 payments that was received through that service. 2020, we had 2,190 for the entire time that was opened. In 2019, we had 1,837 processed through that lockbox. If anybody has any questions, I'll be happy to answer those. Anybody have any questions for Jessica? Um, I guess uh, not. Thank, thank you. Thanks. Community development with Aaron. Hi, good afternoon. So I'm happy to share with you all some statistics from the month of April. So we had one new home completed that makes four for the year. Um, so we're on track for our estimate of about 20 new homes this year. Um, from our community development permit activity, we're up substantially from 2020. We're at 117 permits this, this year, which is a 109% increase over last year. Our ARC reviews are also up. We're at 36, which is a 
3% increase over last year. And then our PPMS violations are up as well um, to 31, which is a 29% increase. Um, and most of those are violations associated with landscaping. I might also note that we had in the month of April also 80 courtesy notices. So there was a lot more educational courtesy notices out there than violations. So we're still working towards that proactive educational component to try to reduce the number of violations and get properties into compliance. Um, some notable trends with the permitting activity, we had two new construction starts. Um, with the overall permitting, less than 1% were on major things like new construction or additions. Um, the vast majority being 62% of the permits were for minor improvements, things like driveways, exterior paint, new roofs, um, kind of small scale improvements. Um, and then about 35% of them were associated with construction. So dumpsters, pods, porta johns, things like that. And we are still seeing a handful of permit extension requests due to supply shortages due to the COVID-19 um, uh, pandemic. However, those are a little bit less than they were last month. So we're starting to see some construction activity moving forward that had been stalled a little bit due to those. So that is what I have to report. If there are any questions, I'm happy to address them. Any questions for Aaron? Aaron, I have to tell you, one of the things that's really refreshing is the fact we don't have the laundry list of suspensions to go through like we've had in past months and years. So that's really nice not to have to go through that. So thank you. Um, monthly security report with Tim. Good afternoon, everyone. Can you see the uh, security department overview slides? Yes, Tim, it's visible. Yep. Right. Thank you. <laughs> so, key metrics for April uh, we had one part one crime, total burglaries and thefts was five, vandalism 13, golf cart violations issued was six, and TLA unlicensed driver violations was four. We're drilling, uh, well, this is the uh, part one crimes. Uh, again, as you'll notice, only uh, one. And that was uh, the golf club stolen out of an unlocked vehicle. Again, keyboard there, unlocked vehicle in the Deer Creek Club. That was turned over to uh, the club's loss prevention officer. Wow. Uh, <clears throat> again, uh, up to uh, from last year, but you'll notice uh, there were four uh, specifically uh, wheelbarrows stolen on one or two different particular days uh, during last month. Um, so that affected our overall numbers as well. And again, the wheelbarrows were left out uh, specifically on uh, uh, trash collection days. So someone might have mistakenly uh, mistook those for part of the trash. Mm -hmm. Vandalism, as we know, is uh, up from um, 6 to 16. Uh, or I'm sorry, um, and in February and March, they were uh, adjusted. We had a lot of street sign vandalism that were um, inappropriately marked as uh, maintenance requests and said, so we did an internal audit of that and adjusted those accordingly. Golf cart uh, violations to date, uh, we've really started to drill down in this for your edification. Uh, we're only two lacking overall for the year to date, uh, but you'll notice the number of unlicensed drivers has increased from five uh, from last year. And unregistered golf carts, which I think is a good statistic, has dropped to um, um, minus seven from the previous year. And we're also um, monitoring the fines as well. So you'll probably see those increase throughout uh, the year. In June and July, we'll, we will be having uh, CSIs, which is uh, uh, courtesy safety inspections at or near the Franklin Creek area, uh, specifically, you know, the deck and the uh, pool over there, as well as Marshwood. So look for correspondence put out there for those. And part of that safety inspection, we will be checking for driver's license as well. Any questions or comments? Saying none, Tim, thank you very much. You're welcome.
Uh, residential directory services agreement. Colonel? Sure, we've had a longstanding relationship with data publishing that's been very good. Um, with the pandemic, certainly um, there's been a hit to uh, advertising, and so they wanted to change our relationship back to how it was when it started uh, in the mid 2000s, where uh, there's net revenues that we participate in versus a flat fee. We believe we'll still um, clear about the same amount of money each year, which is uh, right at around $20,000. But this just formalizes a change in that so that we participate in the risk of uh, d potential decreases in advertising um, over the next three years. You have a recommendation we have to a rec approve the agreement. Is there a motion to approve the three year services agreement with the current publisher of our residential directory data published? Sorry, da data. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. Uh, the next item is the Carefree Boat Club. Right, and this, this item is uh, followed from the request from Carefree Boat Club, actually simply boating LLC, doing businesses, Carefree Boat Club, to assign the existing TLA agreement uh, from Simply Boating to Andrew Jones, who is incorporating as Moon River Boating. Um, Simply Boating is in the process of negotiating a sale of that business. Um, and our agreement requires board authorization to assign the agreement following a credit worthiness assessment, which of course that has been provided uh, to the board. Um, you have a recommendation to authorize the assignment contingent upon the sale. I do want to comment that you're authorizing the assignment, but obviously as part of um, executing the agreement, we would um, require all the provisions of that agreement to be met, which includes insurance, uh, meeting the requirements of Carefree Boat Club, et cetera. Uh, so again, you have a recommendation to uh, authorize the assignment contingent upon sale. Is there a motion authorizing the assignment of the Carefree Boat Club agreement from Simply Boating LLC to Moon River Boating LLC contingent upon the execution of the sale? So, so moved. moved. Second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, aye. Say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, next item is board committee and special reports governance committee. And Thank you, John. specifically the assessment collections policy. Yes, you see on page three, there is a uh, recommendation to approve uh, some revisions to the assessment collections policy. I don't know if Carl or Jessica want to address any specifics on that, but that has gone through both finance and governance and committees and has been approved to move on for board action. Are there any questions or, or comments about the assessment uh, collections revisions? Is there a motion to approve the revisions in the assessment collections policy? So moved. Second? Second. Second. Any further discussion? Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. Directors, comments and questions? Directors have any comments or questions? Hearing on President's report, I would simply um, reaffirm what Sherry was saying, that we are entering hurricane season. It is uh, projected to be an above average hurricane season in North Atlantic. We already have our first named uh, subtropical storm in the Atlantic. So again, especially for new residents who haven't had the um, uh, thrill of participating in, in the exercise of evacuation or getting ready for evacuation, 
I heartily commend going to the to the town hall. You, you do get a lot of good information. So um, hearing, uh, I have no further uh, comments. So is there a motion to adjourn to executive session? So moved. Second. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And assuming that there'd be other eyes as well. Okay, uh, motion carries. We're adjourned to executive <laughs> session. Thank you.